Active Directory printer installation and deployment in Windows 2008 R2 and Windows 2012 for rth.com.au. Let's start with the Windows 2008 box. Start, All Programs, Administrative Tools, Server Manager. We need to uh, make sure the role or install the role. Add role. Print and document services. Next, next. Next. So it's done. Click start. All programs. Admin tools. And find print management. And here's the basic layout. The first thing we should do is add drivers to the system for the various printers we have on the network. Simply choose Add Driver. Um, if it's a you know, x86 or a 64-bit system, i.e. Uh, Windows 7 might be x86 or your Windows 8 could be x64, basically 64-bit or 32-bit systems. Um, the Windows 8 system that I have is a 64-bit system, so I will choose this driver to look for. You can tick multiple. Um, the Windows Update site, or I'm going to have this because I've downloaded the drivers for the HP unit that I have. And I have a choice of PostScript or PCL. We'll do PCL. Now, You've got all these INF files. Um, the one that I'm looking for is a universal driver. driver. It's hard for me to tell because uh, there's so many IFFs in this distribution, but we can have a poke around and find what we're looking for. So here's all the INFs. And if we just open one up and scroll down, we can see various information in there. Typically under the brand, it will tell you more about it. Um, when I find the one that I'm after, it'll make more sense. You can see all these drivers that we're looking for. However, the one that I'm looking for is the HP Universal. Typically you won't have so many INFs, so it won't be an issue. This is the one we're looking for in this case. And of course, you'll see it come up. Next and finish. And the driver will be installed in the system. Um, to keep the system minimalistic, I will always avoid putting the CD in and clicking set up and installing all the software that comes. Um, I'll even avoid that on desktops, but definitely on servers. This is the cleanest way to do it. Once we have the driver in place, we need to put a port in place. This would be the uh, connection from the server to the printer via IP address, being that it's a network printer. Um, if it was a local printer, you'd use the LPT1, but this is a network printer. TCP IP. Now, right here, it's going to ask us for a name or an IP address. Before we go plugging the IP address in there, we need to ensure that the printer printer's IP will not change. That can be done by going to the printer and assigning what we call a static IP address, which is you tell it what IP address you want it to have, or by going onto the DHCP server, or DHCP server could be on a router, on your Windows machine, on a Linux machine, and doing a reservation, which involves putting the MAC address of the printer in place and assigning an IP address. For this demonstration, I will show you how to do it in Windows DHCP. Simply open it up, IPv4 is what we're interested in. Find the reservations. New reservation, we'll call this Office Printer. The address uh, can be 0.3 in this case. The MAC address, when you print out uh, the test page, um, you will get a whole bunch of information. And one of the, some, 
part of that information will say the hardware address or the MAC address. So in my case, it's going to be F4 CE46 483C43. And that is pretty much it. Okay, now when that uh, printer gets turned on on the network, it will go out to DHCP, grab that IP address, and I know that that is always going to be its number. Of course, uh, the other way to do it would be to go into the printer and assign that number, but this just gives better accountability. So, once we have that, we can come back here, and we can type in a name, um, or we can type in the IP address. Okay, now because this is a VM environment, um, I do not have a virtual printer, but I do have a physical printer on my network, which means I'll have to use a different IP address. For your work environment, you would be using this IP address. So let me show you how that looks. And we can just call that Office Printer. or the IP address. The printer is detected. Finish, close, and you'll see we now have a port or a connection from the server to that printer. Next, we add the printer. Right click, add printer. Now, we don't need to do this step because I've demonstrated that above. We can simply add the printer to the port that we've created. We don't need to install a new driver. We can just choose the driver that we've installed prior and we can name it. Share this printer. And of course at this point we can print a test page or we can um, add another printer. Okay, so now we have the printer installed. We can right click on it, choose properties, and with some devices, depending on how many features and things they have, um, we can go in here and we can configure some more options. Listing in directory can be handy, uh, it allows the clients to go to the control panel and choose add printer. So let's go ahead and choose that. Um, of course, in here we may want to choose the printing defaults and change paper sizes and things like that. But as you're probably familiar with the printer, you're probably also familiar with the different settings and things that you want. And of course we have some information about it, device settings, and rights, permissions. Um, this printer that we're using is, is fine with the defaults. So, once the printer is set up, we need to deploy. We have no deployed printers. You'd simply right-click and deploy with group policy. But for that, we would need a group policy that is applicable. Now, looking at group policies, which is simply start all programs, admin tools, group policy management, um, I have created a container for my PCs. And if we find where is it, users and computers, you'll see that I have put one, my workstation or my VM workstation into the Edge PCs container. That will allow me to create create a new group policy. We can call this um, Office Printer, and we can then link that office printer policy to that container, which means uh, anything in that container will get this policy. And this policy doesn't have to just be the office printer. It can contain all the different um, group policy settings. But for the purpose of this demonstration, it's just going to be used for printer deployment and we'll cover group policies at a later stage. So heading back to our printer deployment, 
we can right click, deploy with group policy, browse and we can choose our policy, office printer, apply to machines. By the same instance you could create a container with specific users in it um, and then you would obviously choose the other one because it would be a per user based policy um, and hence you'd be deploying your printers per user. So we're going to deploy to, to that machine, all the machines in that container. Choose Add, so it appears in the second line here. Apply, OK. What we should see is the deployment here. And of course, if we come in and try to deploy it again, we'll see it down here as well. So that is the printer drivers installed, the connection or the port set up, the Print is installed and configured, and we've deployed it. So, what we'll do now is I'll fire up the Windows 8 machine and we'll log into that, and I can show you what happens. Okay, it's on the Windows 8 machine. Okay, as you can see, the printer hasn't been deployed yet, probably because we haven't allowed enough time for group policies to sync. Uh, easiest way to fix this, if we're impatient, is to run up the command prompt. And gp update space forward slash force. And look at that. Now, of course, we don't need to run this command. Uh, this was purely a way of getting the group policies through quicker. And it's our default printer. And we can print a test page. Okay, so that's worked successfully. Now, should I have a, a problem at this point, as long as the, the printer is saying that it's received a, a job, it's most likely going to be a driver setting, um, and you can play around with uh, trying different drivers. Postscript, or instead of using a universal driver, try something more specific um, for your printer. Okay, so that was Windows 2008. Let's go to Windows 2012 now. Windows 2012. So rather than bore you by running through the whole process again, we will run through the setup from the command line. Um, obviously at this stage we've put the, uh, gone into DHCP, um, reserved an IP address, or set a static IP address on the printer. We need to install the features. Now, if you're not sure what the feature name is, you can simply run this DIS command and it basically says get features, format it as a table and more allows you to press spacebar to tab through it. And you'll see that there's quite a number of features that Windows has. Now the one we're looking for is uh, printing. And you can see here, printing server role. So, DSM online, enable feature, printing server role. Now, under 2008, you'd simply do that command. Under 2012, you do all, and it goes out and gets a whole bunch of dependencies that are involved with it and linked to that package and installs them all. These commands will be on the website, of course, so you can just copy and paste them from there. And that's really all there is to do. Um, the rest of it, I like to do at 
uh, where the drivers are. So you can see here we've got our HP drivers, PCL and the, and the PS. And I've got a little script here, and it simply gets the current path, which is this folder here, installs the um, PCL driver and the PostScript driver. Of course, we found those INFs before. It creates the ports, and one of the ports is called Office, the other one's called Warehouse, because we have these two printers and these two IPs that have been reserved. And then we create three print, uh, printer entries. Now, two of these are going to be the Office printer. One of them will be using the PCL lab labeled here, and the other one will be using the PostScript driver labeled here, but they'll both be the Office printer. The lab printer rather warehouse printer is its name will print to the warehouse port using the postscript driver so let's run that and see how it goes now as you can see that was very easy launch the print management and what we should find is we have the drivers installed the ports installed and you can see that they're configured up exactly the same as the 2008 server and we have our printers installed and all we had to do was run one file. So if we you know, move servers, we'll need to do it somewhere else. We'll do it at home. It's just a right click, run PowerShell, and uh, you're done. This can also be run as a, a uh, bat file as well. And of course, the last thing would be to deploy. Exactly the same. Find your group policy, we're going to deploy it per machine, add it, apply it. Okay. And there you go. We have um, installed and deployed printers in Active Directory with Windows 2008 R2 and Windows 2012. Um, if you have any comments, leave them against the YouTube video or in the forums or email me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation for itedge.com.au.